Now remove the fuel tank and the seat so it'll have plenty of access to all the electrical hookups, coils. We've got to rewire the uh, 12 volt feed. We'll mount the resistor where they originally had the uh, condenser for the uh, point system. That'd be a good place for it right there, but we'll have to run a little bit longer wire to supply 12 volts. So we unbolted the condenser to the engine support bracket. Let that hang down there a minute. We'll unscrew the points plate and remove it. You take your upper engine mount bracket off the, off the bike and drill two holes to mount the resistor where your condenser used to go. And you have to solder your wires to the ends and slip some insulation over them. And we'll wire that in later. Okay, the first fit problem I've run into is on the back side, the two top screws that hold the um, uh, coils in place are proud. Those two screws right here are proud. And they interfere. They won't fit flush in the... Um, in the housing, so I'm going to gently file these off smooth where I get a good flush fit. So far, this is the only fit problem I've run into. You pull the old uh, points type breaker plate and connector off the engine. Uh, won't need them anymore, I hope. Push them aside, save them for later just in case. And we've installed the, uh, the new electronic pickup coils on their plate. And you'll see that it's uh, 180 degrees out from what the old point system was. So it doesn't matter. What matters is that we get the, the rotor pointing at the right uh, coil at the right time. The engine doesn't care which way it sits. But it has to go this way. Otherwise, the coils would hit the top of the plate up here. And it wouldn't fit, the, fit back on the engine. So we just make it 180 degrees out, time it that way, and everything will work fine. All right, the rotor. If you'll notice, there's a little magnet on it, stamped into it. That's what passes by the coil and trips the circuit. And actually make and break a circuit to fire the coil. So we're going to have to get on the right-hand cylinder. That's the F. F mark. You see I made a little pencil mark where I can see where the magnet is. And uh, I'm going to slide it on here. I want that mark right center of that coil. I have the um, Timing mark straight on the F, right hand side. Right hand side is the first one to fire. And that's where we want to tighten up the rotor at. The so right hand cylinder fires first. Then it goes around. Ah, I got a lot of compression. And then there's your left hand cylinder. It fires right on time. Perfect. And that should be real close to in, in, in time. You want to make sure this is flush with the end of the shaft or your magnet will be dead center as it passes by that coil. You see, we mounted our uh, uh, resistor, 12 volt resistor, where our condenser originally was and ran our wires around here and we split the 12 volt wire I actually made a T there for the 12-volt wire from the ignition cones. And the red wire feeds the two pickup coils, full 12 volts. The black wire goes through the resistor to the coils and cuts the voltage down to the coils. So you won't have so much heat on those coils, save your electronics. So now we're ready to set our basic timing. And it's probably already closed, but 
we're going to get it as close as possible. The little magnet on the rotor, you see where I've marked the, the outside of it where I can see the middle of the magnet. As soon as that magnet reaches this field in the middle of the coil here, it opens this, this or creates a circuit and fires the coil. So you want to get your, your rotor pointer and set your timing mark on fire. And we're going to set our rotor where it just flips into that uh, into that coil. All right, now, a little bit more. On fire. Pushed again too far. We want it sitting right there. Okay, let's see if we can tighten her down. Uh, ah, it may take a couple of tries here, but let's see. That's pretty dang close. But, my plate isn't centered. Let's go back here. Make sure your plate is centered when you have plenty of room to set the timing. Now let's look at it again. And when it comes around to fire, and we're a little bit slow. A little bit slow. This may take several tries to get it right. This is one of those important steps of the whole thing. And let it slide again. Let me tighten that back a little bit. Just center. Tighten it down a bit. Now, get our rotor loose. Put it back on fire. And just as it gets to it. Let's see where we are now. That looks pretty close. All right, now we're going to set our timing. And it's easy to set the timing now. You don't have to worry about a timing light. Or we'll, uh, look, the timing light like this. <laughs> Useless now. Well, we'll use it later to check our advance. But for now, we're going to set our basic timing. So, I got a test light hooked to the Electrically hooked to the right hand coil, the blue wire coming off the right hand uh, pickup coil that fires the ignition coil. I got it hooked to my test light, the test light's grounded. When you cut the ignition on, you see the, the circuit is made. And without, when you back it off of it, so you just barely burn it. And as we roll towards our timing mark, see where it fires. Right there, the light will come on, and we are right dead on the fire mark. Okay, that's perfect. You get that pretty close. Okay, let's cut it back off. And tighten our set screw down real good now. I don't want that to move any. It's right where we want. Okay, and tighten our plate down too because our timing is set. Also, on this 305 Honda engine, you notice these two tick marks far advance of the uh, fire mark, the top dead center mark. That's as far as you're supposed to let the uh, cam uh, camshaft advance the timing. You hook it up, get it running, your timing light. At high RPM, it should never go past those two marks. If it advances any further than that, you're going to have piston damage. So even if you have to retard the timing all the way back to the top dead center mark, do that. You don't want to let it go past those two advanced marks. So the timing set, I think it's time to put it back together and see if it'll run. <laughs> it better. Yeah,
Frank's been running.